In today's show, uh, I'm going to do something I have never done before, and that is review a full range speaker with a, as a single full range driver. The speaker is the Fern and Roby Raven 3. So, yeah, it doesn't have a separate tweeter or a separate mid range or a separate woofer. No, all of the frequencies come from this one eight inch driver. Yeah. And there's no crossover network because there doesn't need to be a crossover network because all the, all the sound comes from this one driver. Now, the, the speaker is available in two finishes, just two finishes, ash, which is the light wood finish I have here, and also walnut. But make note, this is solid wood. It's not a veneered over chipboard or MDF or something. No, this is a solid wood cabinet. That's pretty special. And it is made in-house, the cabinet, and all the woodworking is done in-house at Fern and Roby's factory in Richmond, Virginia. You look around back, you'll see a set of Cardis solid copper binding posts, and the internal wiring is made by Black Cat Cable. <laughs> Say that three times fast. That eight inch driver is made by CS, in Norway specifically for Fern and Roby. It's not an off-the-shelf driver. Oh, and this is really special. These speakers were delivered by the designer, Christopher Hildebrand, and we did a sit-down interview actually right here talking about the details of the design. And that's going to be in a separate video. That's like a part two to this video. So for more information about the design, definitely check out the interview. Next, I want to talk about uh, setup. <laughs> and I did find these speakers a bit mm, fussy about placement. They needed to be placed just so. And I can tell you about my experience, because I actually reviewed them in two different parts of this room. This wall here behind me, and also over there in the larger end of the room. And uh, well, here, I had the speakers about 15 inches away from this wall and about six feet apart, and I was listening from about six feet, six or seven feet away, and the speakers were towed in pretty much directly to me. Uh, over at the other end of the room, I had them nine feet apart, and they were 28 inches from the wall behind them, which is the wall with all the records. Um, so yeah, the, you know, I had to do a lot of fussing and tweaking to get it just right, but when I got it nailed in perfectly, I was really impressed with the, well, the full range quality of the sound. Very, very coherent and seamless, and the tone quality of this speaker, whether I was playing electric music or acoustic music, it just seemed very natural and organic. Yeah, it just pulled me in to the music. Now I used a few different amplifiers, two low-powered amplifiers. The first Watt SIT3, and that was a great combination. The uh, Linear Tube Audio Ultra Linear, which is a 20-watt tube amplifier. Oh, and to kick them into high gear, I used a more powerful amplifier, the Mola Mola Perka, which is a 150-watt per channel Class D amplifier. And I am working on a review of the Perka so stick around for that in the coming month or so. As for specifications, I can supply two. Uh, the impedance is rated at 8 ohms, and the sensitivity spec is 94 dB. Now, over the course of my time with the speaker, I spent a lot of it listening very quietly at late night levels, and these speakers do that exceptionally well. They play, you know, moderately loud, very, very nicely. Now, if you want to like really crank it and do parties and stuff, this is a small speaker. It's 34 inches tall. It has an eight inch driver. It's not going to get crazy loud. If you need that, you should, well, look at something like a Klipsch Cornwall 4, you know, with a 15 inch woofer, you know, big horn mid range and tweeter. That'll play loud way better than this one will and cost less. Oh, and actually, yeah, what does this speaker cost? The Fern and Rovi Raven 3 in the light ash finish, the one I have here, that's $8,500 a pair. And for the option, the other option, the walnut finish, that is $9,150 a pair. 
And I will note that uh, Fern and Roby sells direct in the United States and internationally. So they, you don't have to raise the price by having extra margin built in for the distributors and dealers in other countries. So uh, yeah, those are the prices. It's an expensive speaker for sure, but the craftsmanship in this speaker is exquisite. I love the look of this speaker. It's so simple, so elegant. It's very easy on the eyes and it just kind of exudes quality. It just so happens that the first CD I played with the Raven 3 was this Frank Zappa album, Francesco Zappa. <laughs> this is the music of an 18th century composer, Francesco Zappa. He was a cellist. And Frank, this record was recorded in 1984, and Frank is playing a Sinclavier uh, synthesizer. So it's a different kind of Zappa record. It's classical music, but done on a synthesizer. And it's really, really beautiful. It's kind of like his uh, equivalent of Switched on Bach. But it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It pulls you in. Uh, after a while, you're not even thinking that it's a synthesizer. It just is beautiful, classical music. Anyway, the next piece of music I played was this great album by Jackson Brown, Running on Empty, which is a live record of sorts. It's in small venues and hotel rooms, you know, that sort of thing. And it was the immediacy of uh, Jackson Brown's vocals that really grabbed me. I felt like I was listening to an event, you know. I was very aware of Jackson's uh, phrasing, and his proximity to the mic, those sorts of things. This speaker resolves that kind of, let's say, inner detail very, very well. But when the music starts to cook, it does, the speaker does rhythm and pace and timing and all those things, possibly because it is a single driver speaker. It's not going, the signal isn't broken into parts as with a tweeter and a mid. No, it's all coming from one source. Now, you might think, and I would have thought, that that meant that the imaging would be hyper-focused and precise. I wouldn't say that the Raven 3 does that particularly well. It's not terrible. It's about average in its imaging. But it's the coherence of the sound stage and the way it just it, it gets bigger and smaller depending on the mix of the recordings. It, it resolves those kinds of details very, very well. The next music selection was this one by David Byrne. It's a music score for a dance piece by Twyla Tharp. It was recorded in 1981. It kind of sounds like one of those David Byrne, Brian Eno collaborations. It has that kind of vibe to it, but in fact, it's not. It doesn't sound like a Talking Heads record, but uh, an Eno appears on the record just a little, and like one or two tracks, but it's, so it's really a David Byrne uh, thing. And actually, I was at one of the performances of the Catherine Wheel around this time. And it just so happened, as I was going in, I saw Andy Warhol. This is in New York City. I can't remember where it was. I think maybe Town Hall. But anyway, I have that memory. And anyway, it's a gorgeous piece of recording. Uh, it sounds really good. It's very dynamic. It's minimalist. There's a lot of space between the instruments. It's for electric guitar, bass drums and other instruments and electronics and stuff. Uh, it's a gorgeous piece of music, but it is, remember, a dance piece. So that the way these speakers, the Raven 3s, communicated rhythm and pace and timing, and I was moving and I don't really move, I don't dance. But anyway, I felt like this is communicating on that level. Next up, I played uh, one or two Miles Davis mid-1960s albums, so before he went electric. And what really impressed me about the sound I was getting off of the Raven 3 is the way the Ravens communicated and reproduced the sound of the leading edge of the trumpet. That leading edge transit was so right sounding over this speaker, which, you know, I wasn't fully expecting that it would do that because the speaker does not have a tweeter to provide the high frequency support. But nevertheless, uh, I was very pleased about the way this speaker could reproduce the sound of brass. You know, I love Radiohead's music, but I have to admit that back in the day when Kid A and Amnesiac came out, I didn't get it. I just 
didn't understand the music. But over time, it started to seep in, and it's the complexity of the mixes in Radiohead that I love. There's just so much going on, and Tom York's vocals, which used to annoy me, it's there's such an emotional quality to them. He doesn't try to sound like anybody else. And I felt that, yeah, the Raven 3s could really let me sink in to those very complex mixes. Then it was time to do a speaker comparison, and I didn't really have uh, an ideal candidate just sitting here. No. Anyway, here's what I did. I used the Zoo Dirty Weekend 6, mostly because it is about the same size, although the Dirty Weekend 6 is larger. It's deeper. And it's, by the way, a $2,400 repair speaker because it has the Superfly upgrade. So anyway, I'm doing these comparisons. And yes, uh, by the way, the Dirty Weekend 6 has an actual tweeter. So there was more high-frequency detail and air and delicacy coming from the DW6. That much was clear. But on the other hand, the Raven just had a better overall sense of tone, of natural, organic, real sounding, these are live instruments in front of me, acoustic and electric, than, than the DW6 could muster. The bass definition and detail, well, in terms of the amount of bass, I should put it that way first, they were comparable to each other, but I felt that the Raven 3 just had more detail in the bottom end. Oh, you know, so one other thing. The DW6 can play louder than the Raven 3 without strain. The Raven 3 plays loud, certainly loud enough to suit my taste. But if you really want to crank it, no, this isn't the speaker for you because it is, after all, a relatively small speaker with an 8-inch driver. So it does have its limits. The next speaker, well, I didn't actually do a comparison, but I just reviewed it. The ATC SCM50 triamped active speaker. Now that one is $22,000 a pair. But and I know that people want me to put these reviews in some sort of context. So since the ATC was just here, I'll throw it into the mix. The ATC can play louder. It's more dynamic. It has much greater uh, top end detail than the Raven 3. It is a more alive sounding speaker. But I will say this, the Raven 3 is a more forgiving speaker than the ATC SCM50. The ATC SCM50 is pretty nice speaker, pretty organic in its own way. But yes, if you play crappy recordings that are distorted and compressed and everything, you're going to hear that. And the Raven 3 is a smoother ride. It's less revealing of flaws in recordings than the ATC SCM50. Oh, and yes, there's also the other speaker, which I did do a comparison with, and that is the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. Now, this is an open baffle speaker, just as much sound is coming out of the back of it than the front, so it sounds bigger and more spacious. And by the way, it does have 15 inch woofers, so it has a fuller, more complete bottom end uh, experience than the Raven 3s could muster. But the Raven 3s are more likely to really come together in smaller rooms than what then you'd use normally with the Duet 15. You know, different strokes for different folks. There's no one speaker that's really clearly better. It always depends on the situation of how that speaker is going to be used. So yeah, and by the way, I wouldn't be pairing the Raven 3 with inexpensive, bright, nasty, hard sound electronics. That is not a good thing. I use the good stuff, as I explained earlier. And this, this speaker, the Raven 3, will really do its best when paired with really first-class electronics. I mean, I use them with those three different amps. The first watt SIT3, the Linear Tube Audio Ultra Linear, and also the Mola Mola Perka. And this speaker easily resolved the differences in sound quality between those three uh, amplifiers. And I would say, actually, if I had to pick one that I felt was a bit better than the other two, it would be the uh, LTA Ultralinear Amp. That, that, that was a magical combination with the Raven 3. So now I'm going to do it. Yeah, so Steve, what do you really think of the Fern and Roby Raven 3 speaker? Well, 
you could tell I really liked it, but I just want to stress what really, of all the things that this speaker does well, it's tone. This music's tonality just suits my taste. That is, it's on the rich side of neutral. It just makes uh, acoustic and electric instruments sound more complete, more full body, more real in that sense of tone. It's also a very dynamically alive sounding speaker, not quite at a horn level, but it's up there and in communicating rhythm and pace. It just communicates energy so well. It's a very engaging speaker. It pulls you into the music. The sound staging is big and wide, not as big and spacious as an open baffle speaker, but pretty just open. There's a coherency to the sound of a full range driver speaker, especially one as well engineered and complete as this one. So yeah, I am, I am so in on this speaker. Yes, it's really expensive, but the build quality just exudes real quality, not superficial like shiny things and glitzy things. No, it goes deeper. You really sense that when you're in the presence of this speaker. So it is highly, highly recommended. And speaking of highly recommended, yes, <laughs> let's do it. The Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. These pictures were sent in by Dan. He lives in Metro Detroit. His speakers are Klipsch Chorus 2s with titanium tweeters and Bob Kreitz crossovers. Preamp. Emotiva XSP1, power amp, Rogue Audio, Medulla with new old stock 1963 Mullard tubes. The turntable is a Project X2 with Ortofon Super OM40 moving magnet cartridge, phono stage, Rogue Audio Stealth, streamer Blue Sound Node 2, I, DAC, Denifreps Aries 2, for spinning SACDs, it's a Sony player, and cables by AudioQuest and Shunyata, and room treatment around the room is by GIK Acoustics. Thank you, Dan. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. And again, I want to thank everybody that we just hit 250,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody, and uh, there's still room for more. Oh, and then of course, I wanna give a big thanks to my patrons, and if you would like to join my Patreon, it's super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. You can join for just a couple of bucks a month, up to 50 or even $100 a month, and at those top two levels, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. And I really, really do enjoy talking to the people who watch this show. We talk about audio a lot. We talk about other things as well. And uh, some of my patrons have stuck around for years, <laughs> you know, years, multiple years, like three, four, some are even approaching five years of having these monthly conversations, which is amazing to me, really amazing. So anyway, you can be part of that. Anyway, uh, Thank you, everybody. I want to thank everybody for watching this episode. If you dig it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have yet to subscribe, yeah, please do so. Anyway, uh, my work here is at last complete. Hope to see you uh, back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>